One thing I love about this particular film, I know you, I know you recreated a lot of what Stanley Kubrick did in the original Shiny, except for the elevators. Um, that was shot back on 35 millimeter, you know, in the 70s. You shoot digitally here. How do you match the way what, what you shoot in your film to what he shot? Because that's the only shot you used. Well, actually, that was the only shot we used in the teaser trailer. Yeah, so when we released the teaser, that was the Kubrick Bloody Elevators. What's the one in the movie? That's ours. Oh my um, God. And we only used his in the teaser because ours wasn't done yet. So, um, oh. so yeah, uh, there are though, there are three shots in the film that are Kubrick's footage uh, that have been altered. And I'm curious if, if you can spot them. I'm trying to think yeah. now. Uh, it's, well, I, 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 won't, Any I, won't, the mazes? I won't burn your time maze? that way. No, the maze is ours. The maze is all ours. No, uh, the only shots that are Kubrick's in the film are the shot of, of the island in the canyon, um, <laughs> which we made darker and added snow, uh, and then the two shots immediately following it of the car driving up the mountain. Yes. Um, we took his footage, because I wanted it to be the same drive, and we, there was no way we could have recreated that perfectly. Uh, but we stabilized it, we made it nighttime, we added snow, and we replaced the car with Dan's car. Wow. Uh, but th those are the only shots. The elevator shot, did you do the blood for real like he, like he did it? It's, it's digital, because uh, if we were gonna do um, practical fluid, it would, there was no way in hell we'd ever come close to, to having it land and behave the way his did. Um, so we spent, uh, we spent, I think it was four months working on that shot, trying to simulate that, those fluid dynamics as closely as possible to, wow. to his actual shot, but we needed it we needed to change it because his lens is almost on the floor. It's so low. Hmm. It's much closer to the actual elevators. The blood actually washes over the lens in his. And in, in our film, um, Rose the Hat is the one looking at, at the elevators. She's standing at the, uh, the far end of the hallway. She's much higher. Hmm. I needed a, a camera position that was wider and, and higher. And that's why we had to recreate it. Well, I wrote so many questions yeah. for you. I'm trying to get through as many yeah, as I can. Yeah, of course. Can. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically about the Newton Brothers score because it's yes. genius. And yeah. the heartbeat to me, because mm -hmm. the film is so brilliantly paced and it feels like it goes by in like 45 minutes. And I oh, think wow. a lot of it had to do with the score, but also the way your storytelling works. Talk about that heartbeat and the choice of when to use it and when not to use it. Because to me, it's almost like, is that my heartbeat happening here? Am mm -hmm. I the one freaking out and getting nervous? Or is that on screen? That's a cool concept, I thought. Yeah, it, which is a, a lesson we learned from The Shining, you know, and, and um, that sense of when, when a, a sound design element is that specific and can actually be, you know, that question of, oh my God, is this my own heart and my own ears? <laughs> As we tweaked the tempo of the heartbeat when we could, we could increase it and let it decrease to kind of, kind of force your body subconsciously to, to have that feeling of clenching up and holding your breath and then of, of relaxing. You know, um, that, was, that was such an incredible tool for that. Um, it, it being able to communicate directly with a viewer's subconscious, mm. um, with a, a sound that we are all experiencing all the time, the blood in our own body kind of beating to our heartbeat, we tune it completely out. Mm which is why we only are acutely aware of our own in moments of intense anxiety or fear. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. You do hear it when you're like nervous or something. Yeah. That's cool. Now, I'm, I'm curious, nerdy question, yeah. Danny goes to Hill House. <laughs> what, how, what, what happens with his shine at Hill House? Oh my God. Um, well, I, I think, you know, Hill House, very <laughs> similar to The Overlook, it's, it's a hungry place. Right. And I think if, if Dan Torrance was wandering through Hill House, um, boy, with what his red room would look like. If you would open that door, I mean, uh, based on the rules of Hill House, that would essentially open up into the entirety of the Overlook Hotel. Oh my gosh, that'd yeah. be amazing. And be... One more question for you. Yeah. I love the filmmaking you did here. That It's shot beautifully, it's scored beautifully, it's paced beautifully. Um, but one thing I'm curious about, that's that shot when Ewan's actually falling. I know we can recreate that over down the hallway, but mm -hmm. on set, um, was he on a wire? Did you have to stop him before the wall? And did you actually explode the wall practically with red rum, or was that digital? Uh, the, the, so the red rum explosion is digital. It looked yeah. real, man. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, him sliding down the floor is the most low-tech effect. It's, we went all the way back to old, you know, original Star Wars technology of, uh, or Star Trek technology, rather, of just tilting the camera. Oh, so it wasn't like a, the room wasn't moving. The room didn't move at all. And, and Ewan is actually on a, a rope. <laughs> and we hand pulled him across the floor, um, and then the the only real change we made to sell that effect, you know, we just tilted the camera and uh, out the window um, we put a blue screen up so that we could have the background rotate, and we did a little move where, uh, as though the street light outside had moved, we just panned a light across the set through the window. But yeah, it's about as 
as uh, actually low tech as, as possible. Was any of the steam real or was that all CG? That's all CG. It looked yeah. freaking real, man. What, it, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, it yeah, took us a long time to crack because it, it always looked like people were vaping. <laughs> and uh, we needed it to be a little more special than that, especially, you know, with, with, with the dangers of vaping as we've come to understand them recently. Um, but yeah, the, the, the steam was all, all digital and, and actually took an enormous amount of refinement because it would always just look like people kind of either were, if we didn't do enough to it, it looked like they were cold. Oh. Um, and if we did too much, it looked like they were, they were vaping. Um, well, first of all, I, I thank you for this interview. I was just talking to Mike Flanagan. I had no idea that... I'm going to interrupt you right now. Yes. Do you know what I've just seen and you remind me of, but you don't look like him. Who? I just saw Dawn Wall. No, I don't know what that is. Okay, you should see it, rock climbing. Anyway, Do continue. Do I look like somebody and in that him, movie? And him, the guy. Sorry. Is it's this a so... compliment? <laughs> I have no idea what this guy I'm looks not... like. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. Uh, but you should see it. It's really good. I will check it okay, out. Okay, sorry, but Rebecca also Doctor Ferguson, Sleep. Uh, but, I do, but I actually do want to know about the elevator sequence because I know Mike had to recreate that. And in the trailer initially, that was actually Stanley Kubrick's original footage. In the movie, he recreates it digitally and he has told me that it's from your perspective. On set, what are you given to make it look like what you're seeing since it's digitally happening. Well, it's just, you know, just the brilliance yeah. of, of me. No, I'm kidding. Um, what we, actually like that what, scene yeah, what with, do you see? with the pouring yeah. of the thingamajiggy, yeah. I don't know how much we should say. Um, so I remember when we did the scene, they built the corridors. So we're in the sets and what I'm looking at is, is other things in my imagination. You're watching Greatest Showman in the corner. <laughs> it's like over think? there. Yes. Never enough is on. <laughs> it's like... I'm seeing myself sing. No. Um... This should also fall out. Leah, the the <laughs> no, I had Mike. So Mike Flanagan. He loves having sort of the audio. His not as playing God. He does like doing that as well. But he also had sort of little uh, the sound effect. If something was good, you would hear cha ching. Really? Or he would, yeah, or he would have a little loop, a song, and he would dance around. He would also then talk to me and go, this is what you're seeing. You're going around a corner. And I would act to is his voice. Is he in your ear? No, he's, he's, he's God in the room. So oh. he's in the studio. Wow. So it's just all over. That's amazing. I work very well with that. I work very well with the unexpected director. If you don't have the image, then I like just listening to him. What about the steam though? Because he said that was CG. Yeah. What do you, do you have any reference? Yeah, so what we had to do was, we had a guy called Terry Notary. Terry Notary's amazing. Yes. I, he's done all these stuff with the Andy Circus yes. for the Caesars of the Planet yes. of the Apes. And yeah. Exactly, what yeah. is that? I don't know. Yeah. He what was a, the monkey. Yes. And now he just did a film where he plays a dog. Anyway. <laughs> Terry Notary is a genius. So, he is he a worked with uh, Brolin on Thanos in Avengers Endgame. Yeah. So many things yeah. he has worked on. And this is a commercial for you. Um, he, anyway, he taught us um, about the concept uh, conception, no, about the idea of the steam and mm. the movement of things. You know, we're 700 years old. How do you move when you've lived that long and you've seen everything? And, and we talked a lot about inhaling of the steam because we didn't really know, would the steam poof out? So do you go, <gasps> or is it more of a concentrated straw motion? And that's what sort of all we worked with. He said he didn't want to look like vaping. That's what he was worried yeah, about. Yeah, no that vaping. That's the only thing he didn't want to look no like. No cigar, cigarette, or any form of nicotine yes. substance. Yes, this is an ad for anti-smoking. Anti-smoking. Yeah, a lot and of ads happening. Here. Terry Notary. And anti-smoking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but one thing I love about this film is your, your character is genuinely scared the hell out of me. And I'm, I, okay, I won't good. go into too many details, but there are some very disturbing, brutal sequences that your character is a part of. Yeah. Um, the one in particular, which I won't give away who it is or what happens, when you have to shoot yeah. a violent sequence like the one I'm referring yes. to, is that, like, when you leave set at the end of the day, and do you why go... why am I laughing? Because like, it's yeah. so horrible. <laughs> I'm looking, like, are his parents okay watching this? No, but I'm, I do wonder, though, like, is that weird? Like, to leave I have the to day say, after that set? That scene is one of the most memorable scenes that I have ever done with any actor in my entire life. Can I ask why vaguely? Because someone had asked me, what, because my son is 12. And they oh. said, so your reaction, they yeah. said, what is it gonna be like doing a scene where your evil has no limits, right? To someone who is very young. And I thought that's called acting and that's what they pay me for, thank you very much. Mm. You know, a little bit cocky. Uh, and then mm. I'm standing waiting for my cue and they've dug the camera down for a two shot. So we're going to enter the scene together in a profile. And 
All of a sudden I hear action. I know my cue. You know, I'm stretching in the background, getting ready for what's to happen. And I hear this guttural pig animal sound. And it's sort of, it's so shocking that tears just stream down my face. I told someone about this the other day and I started crying. And I got so affected by going, I'm going to ruin the scene. I'm going to ruin the scene, shape up. And I start hitting myself and wiping my face and trying to get into it. And I manage to do it. But, yeah. oh my God, it was so exhausting. <laughs> what, happened so, hmm? what happened when they yelled cut? What happened when they yelled cut? He asked for some Coke when he was done, like Coca-Cola or something, or any other drink, because, you know, we don't represent one particular one. Um, Terry Notary. Coca-Cola. No <laughs> and no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but I went up to the person again and I said, you asked me if I was affected. I would never thought, look at me. Script supervisor was crying in the background. People Jeez. were walking away. That was hard to and watch. And I think they might have even had to edit it because it was too brutal, which made me quite upset. I haven't wow. yet seen it, so we'll see what version they did. It's not pleasant. It's a great scene, <laughs> which is really hard to watch. <laughs> But it's perfectly well okay, done. But it also good. shows the relentlessness of your character and how brutal she is. That's that's why it's perfect. Yeah, but also so. it just needs to be, isn't it? And that's yes. why I love this character is the brutality of their action. Do not tell him to stop because we're having fun. I can feel them. Okay. Yeah. Warner Brothers has like a there's like a dot on my forehead. Yeah, right I'm not like, <laughs> <laughs> I ignore them. Um, the brutality of her is necessary to feed the people she loves. Yes. She loves, which means. The outcome is sad for other people, but it, it's how they eat, you know? It's how they survive. And if you look at the sadness that she needs to go through, if she loses someone that she loves, is equal to probably what his parents felt, but you yeah. know, whatever. Well, I always love talking to you. I love talking I really to you. Do. They, so Danny Lloyd played uh, Danny Torrance, obviously, in, in Kubrick's film, but that kid was, you know, he's very, very young, but some of the mannerisms that he have may continue with him throughout his life, but people change as they get older, obviously. Was there anything from Danny's performance that you could pick up on that you did bring with you? Maybe it's something small or little, but something that kind of kept what he did originally. No, I didn't. I didn't much. I didn't much concentrate on his performance, but uh, but m more his sort of spirit in that. Hmm. He was so with. He was so blank. It was so clever of Kubrick to do that. But he was a. He was a damaged child you know in the you, you know by reading his the novel that he's been he's been hurt by his father's alcoholism he was um he, his father broke his arm yeah. in a drunken rage one night so he carries a little pain behind the mm. eyes uh, which is kubrick managed to get out of that young boy br brilliantly mm. but mu much more so i concentrated on jack's character because he's playing my dad and i think we carry a lot of our our father's we carry a lot of our 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 dads in us, mm. you know. We can't help but do that. And so I concentrated more on Jack's character and thought maybe a bit a bit, a bit about how it might have how that might have influenced him. Um, as you approach that famous door, uh, it's in the trailer. We see your head kind of poke through a little bit, as kind of like obviously Nicholson's very famous "Here's Johnny" moment. Um, as filming that, just as you and McGregor, um, what was it like to kind of be a part of that history and kind of walk up to that doorway? I know you're playing Danny; it's a character, but there's got to be something going on in your mind, going, "This is like historic. I'm, this is Nicholson's like one of the most famous scenes he's ever done." What was it like? And you didn't. I'm assuming you didn't like play around and do any jokes about like "Here's Johnny." Or whatever, but I'm wondering, like, for you, what was it like to shoot that and see well, that? Well, it's a sort of, it's more about not thinking about it in a way, because of course, I, you can't not know that it's a sort of <laughs> uh, homage to that moment, or the audience are going to be remembering that moment with Jack. And but my character at that moment is out the window. You know, Danny was his mum had taken him in the bathroom, and he'd climbed out the window and gone down the snow drift, and he was in the maze, and um, so he didn't see his father coming through the door. So I didn't, I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't want to. It's not like. It's not like my character saw the movie. So <laughs> I, I had to sort of not think about it too much. And and of course there was an awareness that what, of what we were doing and the shot we were setting up is going to remind the audience of this famous moment with Jack, and just a famous image of his face through that door. You know, it's. It's on T-shirts in Camden Market in London. You know, you, yeah. you, you. It's just imprinted on our brain. So I had to just not think about it too much and try and make it real for Danny. Like why. You know, why, remembering being in that bathroom with his mum and seeing the axe hole in the door and knowing, knowing what happened mm -hmm. there, 
and um, that his father was chasing him with an axe, trying to kill him. And um, so those are the thoughts I was thinking about, trying not to think too much about the Kubrick's movie. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a super nerdy question, but you do go to a toilet at some point in this film and throw up. Was there any mind there about the train Getting spotting in. scene? Yeah, but no, did, 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 did you think get, about it? Get a down bit? in it. Did you think, did it remind you of that at all? Or were no. you just in a different headspace? No, no, I wasn't thinking much about that, no. Yeah. It's true, I didn't think about it till now. No. It's, it's a cool sequence. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So when was the first time you were able to see the effects done on your character? August. Um, in August, we went and saw a special screening. I was terrified, <laughs> but it was so cool. They did so many things with my eyes, and I was saying, my eyeballs are doing some wacky things. <laughs> Ooh, how interesting. I almost want to watch the version of the movie without the effects on it and yeah. just see you, what your character was doing without the effects. That would be like really That was weird literally what I was watch. doing. Is there a scene you're excited about watching with an audience? Yes, I'm excited for people to see kind of Dan and Avra's possession scene and every show off with the true knot. Yeah. I think people, I think that's an exciting scene. Was there an effect on set that uh, blew your mind? Like, I, I know that Flanagan did a lot of stuff in camera, practically. I know he had you and slide down um, that floor. Was there an effect yeah. on set that you were like, oh my God, this is really cool to see in person? Well, um, I was on the wire when Abra's kind of looking for Rose in the grocery store. I was on a wire and there was blue screen. That was a lot of fun, and when I saw that kind of turn into a galaxy, that was super cool to see. Yeah. Wow, rhyming. Yeah. Galaxy, that's... super cool to see. <laughs> you know, yeah. looking at The Shining, obviously, was, I think The Shining is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Traumatizing. And it's Ooh. awfully traumatizing. Uh -huh. um, how much of that film helped you find this, your character here? Like, was, does any of it help you? Well, um, I think Wendy was kind of my crutch. I kind of took a lot of Aber's personality from Wendy. Um, I also think looking at the overlook, kind of helped me kind of play with that evil energy and how Aber would feel in there. Hmm. 